Entrepreneurially Thinking is a presentation of BioSTL and CET, Center for Emerging Technologies, with Rare Gem Productions, changing the way you view new ventures, including you on the pathway to success with your business in the St. Louis marketplace and beyond. Here's your hosts, Cheryl and Christy. Now let's get thinking entrepreneurially. Welcome back to the Entrepreneurially Thinking Podcast. Our goal is to enliven your entrepreneurial mindset and create pathways for business success in the St. Louis marketplace and beyond. I'm Christy Maxfield. And I'm Dr. Cheryl Watkins-Moore. Hello. Hello, darling. Lead of the uh, BioSTL Entrepreneurial Inclusion Initiative. How could I forget? Uh, Of course not. Not at all. (laughs) Especially because BioSTL is one of our founding sponsors. One of our strongest supporters uh, along with CET. Yes. So we thank them. And as you know, we're always looking for additional sponsors so we encourage you to share this out with folks you know and think about supporting the podcast so that we can continue to bring you great guests and amazing content and, and really continue to have season. fun we're in a sixth season wow. by the time you're listening to us we're well over 20,000 plays and downloads Woo-hoo. like we got some stuff going on but we still need your support yes. so share this with your friends invite folks to subscribe if you haven't subscribed yourself please get to iTunes Facebook LinkedIn wherever you find your podcast you can find us you can subscribe to the podcast. Yes. And we always like to remind folks, Gary V is a big name in the entrepreneurial landscape. And, mm-hmm. and he has said that the future is voice. And since we've been doing this for more than two years or close to two yeah. years now, a year and a half, how year long have we been half. doing this? Yeah. A while. Yeah. Uh, we've been doing it a while. We did it before he said that. Yes. Is my whole point. So, so what did he tell us to do? He said, shout it shout out because the future is voice. Um, yes. On that note, yes, we um, continue to bring the voices and the insights of some incredible guests. I am so excited. Businesses, as we all know, need stable, consistent branding in order to grow. It's one of the many things they need. I think a lot of people forget that, but Lumen Learning defines brand as the personality that identifies a product, service, or company, including a name, term, sign, symbol, or design. I guess we're the brand for entrepreneurially thinking our voices i are, think so i think so okay our heads right well god help us <laughs> our heads and our voices a brand also represents the relationships between businesses customers staff partners and investors when we come back we're going to learn more about a company that provides not just consultation but funding dollars that helps minority-led businesses and nonprofit organizations build their marketing brands as well as collaborative strategies. So it's not just telling you how to do it. They also provide the peanuts to do it. Awesome. That's pretty cool. So as we always say, stay listening. CET, the Center for Emerging Technologies, is a proud founding sponsor of this Entrepreneurially Thinking podcast. We want you to know all about the great things they are up to. Square One offers two training options. Square One Ignite, a four-week program created to help founders quickstart their business model validation process. Or Square One Bootcamp, an in-depth 10-week, 50-hour program that combines formal instruction with hands-on learning, networking, and mentoring. To learn more about Square One Boot Camp or Square One Ignite, visit CETSTL.com. And for your renewed and continuing support, CET, we say thank you. My name is Philip Adeni Shonkokoya. I'm with the brand of St. Louis. Entrepreneurial thinking to me is truly about free enterprise. It's truly about innovation and the ability to create your own personal brand and create your own personal message with your own autonomy and your own sovereignty. So we've been saying all these things about brand, and that's because Brand St. Louis is in the house. Ooh. Right. So that's Business Resource Association for Networking and Development, right? Wow. And that is in the body of... One of the founders, Philip Shungokoya, has joined us today. And you pronounced his name correctly. I came as close as I can. <laughs> We've been rehearsing, and I've told Philip that I respect how hard it is to have folks say your, your name correctly, because I wasn't always Christy Maxfield. Um, so if I didn't get it right, I'll, I'll say it a few times I'll just start we singing, end. say my name, say my name. Fabulous. <laughs> On that note, Philip has joined us to tell us more about what brand is and what brand does. Yes. Um, He's also on the steering committee of Leadership 100 cohort for the Regional Mm. Business Council's Young Professional Network. 
and he's been a big part of the growing entrepreneurship community here in St. Louis. Yes. In the, the three so years I've been doing work with CET, mm-hmm. Brand has really come into its own. In fact, Chevelle Patterson, his partner, um, went through our Square One program. So I got okay. to know Chevelle really well and, and the work that they're doing. And we've asked LaToya Thompson, uh, who is the CEO and founder of Heritage 1933, to join us. She's actually worked very closely with Brand, uh, with Philip and Chevelle. And she's here to talk to us about her company and how it serves women and children affected by homelessness. It also changes the way we think about natural beauty and opens up our thinking about the possibilities of what is and who are beautiful. So I'm really excited to have you both here. I think we've got some great, great guests here. So let's get started. Let's get started. So Philip, Brand, where did this come from? What are you doing? Tell us more. Sure. First of all, I appreciate you guys for having us on today. No, our pleasure. Um, I would say that Brand of St. Louis, like you mentioned, the Business Resource Association for Networking and Development, our goal is to empower urban communities to develop innovative solutions for their challenges. And that's really getting at the heart of the fact that there is an economic disparity between the percentage of African-American small businesses that are getting denied credit due to things that they can easily fix, credit score, credit report. Yep education in general. Mm -hmm. So I think that's where it truly started, was how do we get those resources out there? So branding's important, but it's not exclusively what y'all do. Right, it just happens right. to be the acronym for what you do. And it's what brings people in because they know they want to enhance their brand. Right. They want to enhance their marketing. It's a hook. It's a hook. People want to talk about social that's media first. Marketing. Exactly. A hook, and right? then we get them on the management exactly. piece. Exactly. So. Excellent. Mm-hmm. I think that's really cool because you're helping them on one piece of their business that they think they need help with, but you're looking and analyzing the entire business, right? Right. And understanding right. where are the gaps and where are the needs. And you provide not just that expertise from a consulting standpoint mm-hmm. you also provide is it monetary funds for them sure yeah we would provide access to capital we just recently did a pitch competition ah. and we have our finalist here with us today ah. wonderful yep. so latoya how did you find out about brand was it the acronym and the idea that you needed to talk to somebody about your brand <laughs> that got you in did it work absolutely all it right did work. excellent <laughs> yes we validate through the customer hook. interviews <laughs> And, and an experience. <laughs> the hook worked, right. <laughs> I got an email with all these different resources. That's what they specialize Brent. in. Absolutely. Connecting folks, right? Absolutely. And I'm not sure, did I sign up somewhere? Or did someone sign me up? Um, I believe Monty helped. Okay, yeah. so Monty. Right. So she signed me up. Takes, and, a, vig- takes <laughs> a village, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Right. And I believe it was weekly or maybe monthly emails um, of various resources that were available. Okay. In the community, right? Yes. yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. And that that's how you got started with them. And then you moved on through and are now the... What, you were the finalist in the well yeah well they have various resources so i attended a few of them and then the most recent one was the pitch competition so how did you had you ever pitched before what got you (laughs) what got you because most people are terrified to pitch right how did that how did you get uh engaged with that yeah Yeah. all of that all of it (laughs) all of what you just said yes i was terrified that's what her face tells me (laughs) so i didn't deliver the actual pitch okay okay Um, my partner, which is my project manager, Monty, she did. Okay. okay. Um, and that was her first time pitching. Wow. Before. Yeah, that was her first time. And it was super exciting um, for both of us. That is exciting. So what yeah. were you pitching? Tell us about your company. Yes. Yes. So Heritage 1933, it is a non-toxic skincare and hair care um, company. Um, and where did that name come? I'm always interested she's in She's going to dig. Heritage <laughs> she wants a backstory. I, I will dig. All right. Well, Heritage 1933. What is that about? Yeah. So originally when I was writing out my business plan or, or had this vision for the company, it was to sell um, natural textured extensions. Okay. And to partner with major brands to give me the hair care products so I can give to shelters. Oh. Um, and then Heritage it was going back to like our roots uh-huh. um, and mm-hmm. to pay homage to the women um, that came before us. Mm-hmm. And the 1933 is the year that my grandmother was born. Oh, wow. Yeah. To kind of put it all <clears throat> into full circle. So you're providing hair care products to uh, women and children in homeless situations? Or? Yes. That's interesting. What made you decide to do that? Yeah. So um, doing research, I knew that I wanted to start a for-profit business. Mm-hmm. Um, 
and I was trying to figure out ways that I could still be impactful and have purpose Mm -hmm. um, in business. So I said, okay, there's plenty of hair care companies out here. There's plenty of skincare companies out here, Mm -hmm. but there's no um, company out here that's given directly um, to the underserved. They may give a percentage or proceed or um, donations, Mm -hmm. but they're not given directly. And I had just, um, like a year ago had read one of the times books Mm -hmm. and how his company started. And I was like, that's pretty cool. So what if I can do the same, use that same model, Mm -hmm. you buy one and give one and it will be for shelters. Mm -hmm. Cause I was doing more research on shelters. Um, what the need is like they wish list. That's your business model. And is that you're selling to the general public, but then it's buy one and then they get to, um, with that purchase, that uh, that free product, so to speak, goes yeah. to a shelter. Yeah. So, so it's buy one, we give one. So it's, that's it's great. like two businesses in one. So yeah. you have the social side, yes. and then you have the for profit side. And are you still doing extensions? Or are you? Yeah. So now I well because none of the companies want to jump on board. I said I'll start. <laughs> I start researching and mm-hmm. concocting my own little ah, mixtures and formulations. Pivot. We love pivot. Ah. Yes. So it's extensions and it's skincare and then it's hair care as well. Wow. Okay. And then. With the show, which was really important that I reached out to shelters because it, when I was younger, me and my family, we lived in a shelter. Mm-hmm. My mom struggled with drug abuse and mm-hmm. alcoholism. And um, our hair as women of color yep, is yeah. something extremely important to us, no matter if you're living right. in, in Ladue or Clayton Absolutely. or wherever or in the shelter, like it's embedded in us. Mm-hmm. It's a part of us. Mm-hmm. And um and that gets overlooked, I guess, yeah. from people who are coming from backgrounds like that. You know, you don't think about, you know, you still want to look good. You still want your hair. You Absolutely. want skin care. Personal pride. Absolutely. Self-esteem. Yeah. Absolutely. That. That's, and that, it builds up self-esteem, especially if yes. you're, you're a woman in transition. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You're going out interviewing. Right. Or trying to, you know, rebuild what mm-hmm. you had before. Mm-hmm. We're so your hair is your identity and a lot of people don't realize that that is very that's very cool so you don't have much do you have a lot of competition in that with that model and what you're doing with that model no Mm -hmm. well there's plenty of competition with uh, hair care (laughs) hair care yeah absolutely but not with that model wow so how long have you been in the business so I started the business in 2015 but I didn't launch it until February of 2016 now, why? What was the gap? Well, because I still was going back and forth and trying to figure out, well, if I can't get sponsors to give me the free products, can I really make my own products? And what is the expiration? What's the shelf life? Just right. doing more and more research. Learning. Yes. Prepping. Yes. And like most people don't understand, that's all chemistry and science, what you're talking about. Yeah. Because uh, doing your own formulations mm-hmm. and understanding what works and what doesn't work. Yeah. So. And also really seeing like, OK, I went on two or three shelters. Is it really a need or is it just a, a handful of shelter needs? But so validating your yes. business. So how did brand, how did you guys get connected? To be honest, we really look for those kind of entrepreneurs who are showing a social good tied to their business Mm -hmm. because we don't want to only look for nonprofits who are doing good work Mm -hmm. because a lot of times they're they're hoping for the donations every year. We want somebody who's going to think through the revenue model for the sustainability. There you Mm -hmm. go. So that that's definitely why she definitely came up to the top of our list to make the semifinalists. And then Monty was able to pitch live for the, the finalist pitch competition. It was sponsored by CIBC Bank. So we definitely wow. appreciated it. And what does that uh, now as a as a finalist, what does that unlock for her? Sure. So she's going to have access to our startup league services, which is actually through a online platform where we have mm-hmm. a web based and an app based app that really speaks to strategic planning. So mm-hmm. imagine an advisory committee for her that checks in with her just like a typical advisor would. Mm-hmm. And then she has access to the events and those resources that are within that app. So, Philip, you mm-hmm. guys are, are a startup in some regards. Did yes. you build the app? Is this something that you and Chevelle sure. did, or how does it? What how was it you, evolved? Yes. How, right, right. Exactly. How was you know your business evolved? Know everything's an evolved? evolution. Uh-huh. Yes. 
We like to think of ourselves as the entrepreneur's entrepreneur. Ah. So we've worked with entrepreneurs that we meet at Venture Cafe, mm -hmm. uh, freelancers from there, and just connected with them to help build that platform. So it was very much a work in progress. Mm -hmm. So we, we worked with some people where we got help on some things where we knew they had a business, mm -hmm. and we wanted to kind of learn through their eyes. That's how we got into real estate. That's how we got into a few other things. So wow. leveraging the entrepreneurs that are in your network, and that's the importance. And okay. this, this speaks to, I, I think, Christy and I always talk about, if you have in the Venture Cafe. It's a great opportunity to connect and, and meet different people. You're only like, was it two degrees of separation oh, from in this people town, that, for sure. right, that you need to meet. So that's great. So you guys are talking to different people. Um, so you're building this this online platform. What else does Brand offer? So we're working on a lot of advisory services for corporations, nonprofit groups who are ah. looking to do their own events, but maybe they don't want... Um, to have Brand of St. Louis as a partner. A lot of times there's a white label concept, right? Uh -huh. So we'll kind of work behind the scenes. You won't see our logos anywhere, but we've worked with a lot of different events in St. Louis, just being their strategic think tank. That is So we have those cool. kind of services as well. Cool. Mm, I know, because I know we have worked with you guys. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Cool. So I'm curious, you know, I know that... You're always as curious. I am. <laughs> um, you know, having been on the... And currently... Uh, still operating within the, you know, that entrepreneur support organization mm -hmm. piece. We're always saying, we always hear, I never knew you guys existed, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then we struggle with how do people find the resources they're looking for when, because uh, there's a lot of things I, kn I don't know exist because the, I'm not looking for them. And when mm -hmm. I start looking for them, I'm always impressed by whatever I find, but I'm also able to easily figure out for the most part, how right. to how to access how to that it. information. Mm -hmm. But we find that folks, particularly women and entrepreneurs of color, they might find the information, but they're not always sure how to access it and mm -hmm. turn it in information into knowledge, right? Mm -hmm. right. And and I'm getting head nods uh, from from our guests. <laughs> and and so as somebody who actively is, I'm thinking about this a lot because mm -hmm. like I want to figure out how to fix this. Mm -hmm. And I'm talking with a lot of people who want to figure out how to fix this. So for you, LaToya, when you were starting to look, you, you got that started in, fit, in, in one year, took about a year before you yeah. felt like you were ready to launch. And I'm sure that there were a lot of cool things you learned but how can we as a community how is brand in particular helping you close those gaps faster wow that's a pretty big question <laughs> <laughs> well we like to be we like to expand your mindset and um she was nodding she them. was nodding all along until and then i actually <laughs> asked her <laughs> so where did you find well, i think i think so like providing the resources mm -hmm. i mean did you feel alone for a lot of your journey or did you feel like you were, you know? Well, I think as an entrepreneur, it's a lot of isolation. Yeah. It, there and, can be. Until you begin to build a team. Mm -hmm. When it's, of course, in the beginning, you're doing everything yourself. Right, right. Um, so brand allows individuals to have resources to say, hey, if you need help with a business plan or if you need help with a mission statement, what that is, this is how we can help you. And then a lot of the stuff, are free right <laughs> so I know. It's at zero cost in this community that's where i think a lot of people don't realize is that there's a lot of uh, good resources but finding them it's 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 understanding who to go to um who's been vetted uh, a lot of times because there might be people oh i can do this i can mm -hmm. do this but sure. um sometimes that might not be the best solution for your business absolutely yes. And when we come back, we're going to continue that conversation. BioSTL is a proud founding sponsor of this Entrepreneurially Thinking podcast. And we want you to know all about the great things they are up to. BioSTL Fundamentals is an entrepreneur development program targeted to founders wishing to start a company in the bioscience space, including therapeutic products, diagnostic products, medical devices, animal and crop agriculture products, and research tools. Participants earn resources by achieving specific coaching goals. You can learn more about BioSTL Fundamentals by visiting BioSTL.org. And for your renewed and continuing support, BioSTL, we say thank you. Latoya Thompson, and I'm with Heritage 1933. Entrepreneurial thinking to me is actually 
doing something, doing it, not being afraid of the failures and working through that. Philip, from your perspective, when we talk about folks being able to find resources and access resources, Latoya, I think, was rather modest about how easy that might be, right? And, and that it takes time. Are you seeing some fundamental disconnects that we as a community need to address? I, I need to understand sure, what's going sure. on. And, and I feel like you might have a better pulse on that than some of the other folks we've been talking right. to. I would say the, the biggest disconnect would truly be, you know, where you're at in your entrepreneurship journey. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, So that's something that our startup league services start with a profile first. Mm -hmm. Where are you? How confident do you feel about your business plan? How Mm -hmm. confident do you feel about your marketing? How confident do you feel about your legal? Because not everybody is ready to submit for arch grants. Right. Right. Most of us are. Right. So, right. Point point in case there. So, you know, you don't want someone to go through that experience thinking that they were ready. And then all of a sudden they feel less engaged to follow up. Or so disappointed because they're like, oh, my God, I didn't even place Mm -hmm. where you weren't ready. Yep. Right. And then you have things like balsa grants. So mm-hmm. it, you have to decide where in the process you are and which kind of opportunity you're ready for. So is brand an opportunity or uh, a service that actually um, starts to triage individuals to these different resources, depending on where they are in their life cycle of their organization? That is the goal. Correct. So it's something where we see the overlap and we say, hey, you might not be ready for this one mm-hmm. during our session. We'll talk about maybe think about that next year. Mm-hmm. But in our next follow up, we'll say, look into X, Y, Z as these resources. Mm -hmm. So we really want to sit down just like a financial advisor. Mm -hmm. You you think about your financial investment firms. Everybody has the same cookie cutter options, but you really need to think about what's best for you right now. So if I'm sitting out there and I'm saying, I don't know where to start. I see I-10s map. I see EQ's map. I see Mm BioSTL. I see all that. Do I have to wait for Brand to have a session that says, let us help you figure out the ecosystem? I don't even know if you have that kind of no. thing. No. So I should just be reaching out to Brand to say, where do I start? Correct. Yep. So we have um, free um, online onboarding for the okay. Startup League services. It's okay. at brandofstl.com. And we kind of bring people in with the freemium model, which is the newsletter. So those are free. Mm-hmm. Those resources are free. But mm-hmm. if you're ready to sit down and talk about which ones in particular are ready for you, mm-hmm. that's when we come in. And I can do that right off of the website. Yes. That will give an insight. And then from there, I sit down and talk with you and Chevelle? Correct. Yep. Okay. We, we've so got, got a team. high touch exactly. experience right after I go through that <laughs> online portal, so to speak. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. And we'd still partner with a lot of people at events. So we'll be able to onboard you okay. as long as you're savvy around a phone. We can get you onboarded pretty quickly. So yeah. it's nothing so that takes too long. You don't even need the computer. Long. You just, if you got your phone yep. and you got an internet connection, mm-hmm. you can get wow. connected to the brand. My mother could do that. I'm just saying. She can't do a computer, but she can do a phone. (laughs) So, and in all seriousness, that means we're lowering the barriers to entry. Exactly. That's really good. And and we have to make sure that, because, you know, we joke about it, but it's not a joke. Like, we've got all these resources in Mm -hmm. our community, and we still have folks who feel like they don't know where to start and how to get connected. But I I love the fact that you guys partner with existing organizations. You're not trying to build separate tracks and separate uh, onboarding processes and I think that you align your resources with the organization's resources as well so it becomes this partnership correct if anything brand st louis as it is today could not exist without the entrepreneurship ecosystem that's already here in Mm -hmm. st louis Mm -hmm. so we're not recreating the wheel no we're just trying to synthesize trying Mm -hmm. to curate what's already happening that's great and for a woman of color latoya how has i mean are you working through the ecosystem as you're developing where are you in the life cycle of your business you've been now around two years yes okay so how do you see how do you see your business and uh, I'm sure it's still evolving, still growing. Yes. So right now we're in a process of um, strategizing ways to scale the business mm. and what does that look like? Okay. Um, and applying for various grants mm-hmm. and saying, do we go to the mass market right now or? Mm-hmm. Should we be talking to Walmart? They've reached out. Should we be talking to Target? Is it is it time right now? So you it's the timing your, right now. That's so really trying great. to just strategize and make sure um, the business is ready for that. So you validated your business. You're seeing uptake in with your business model. 
Yes. That is great. And then you just mentioned, see, she just glossed over this whole thing. I know. And I'm thinking, Walmart I've got a few people you need to out. talk to. I'm like, what the hell? Walmart re- just not, is not a little thing, okay? No. No. That's, that's amazing. Yeah. Wow. So where do you see yourself in the next, you know, I don't go beyond five years because nobody knows what the hell's going on. Where do you see your organization, your company? Well, hopefully it'll be outside of just Mm e-commerce, that it may be in the mass market, that it will will be able to serve people outside the St. Louis, Missouri region as far as the shelters. Okay. Okay. Hopefully be able to be across the United States. That's and it's a really interesting. I love the fact that it's a not it is a not for profit. It is a for profit entity. Yes. Because a lot of times, especially the social enterprise, leveraging the market <laughs> yes. to create there positive social outcomes. And what do you always say? That's a tax strategy. That's not <laughs> well, a, a non profit tax status is separate from mm-hmm. what your business model is. Right. Mm-hmm. And there's pros and cons. We can have a whole <laughs> yes. conversation about that. But, right? I love, but usually but, people always, if they're, especially if they're looking at social good, usually gravitate because they're, they're thinking, I, I have to be a non-profit. And you're, you're, you're seeing that and you're saying that, no, you don't. Yeah, absolutely. But it, people have advice or given suggestions oh you should you know maybe you should consider being a non-profit there are pros and cons and the answer has been consistently no right Mm -hmm. at this time (laughs) it goes back to it goes back to how you make the money no money no mission exactly right exactly no money no mission so philip okay talk to us okay we know what you guys are doing now in the ecosystem to help entrepreneurs what is this real estate play yeah, that you guys got going? He yeah, kind of like love the way that they, in, and then I love we were the like, way they gloss over this stuff. Like it's like, oh well, we're doing this, no big deal. Talk to us about that. So I, I read a good book, um, Think and Grow Rich. Uh huh. And after I read that book, I was working on closing my first four family. Uh, okay. So that was something that definitely spoke to me um, mm-hmm. about the importance of ownership. Mm-hmm. and assets mm-hmm. and one of those biggest things is real estate mm-hmm. so we're currently looking now to see how the real estate can work with the business entities mm-hmm. and that's why I said about the nonprofit. so we do have a 501c3 uh, mm-hmm. brand foundation okay so depending on wh- what you use nonprofits for you have to be aware of what they can do what they can't exactly. do sure but then for the things that they can't we do have that for-profit entity that allows for the services to go mm-hmm. through so so is the vision that part of building your real estate assets will allow you to provide additional funding for entrepreneurs who come to brand? Yes. Exactly. <laughs> I don't want love to give it all vir- away now. <laughs> I love that virtual. <laughs> See, now uh, I have to come back to you and say like any entrepreneur, you got to talk about your idea because uh-huh. uh, you know what? Execution, execution, that's execution. Right. Very true. That's I right. don't think anybody's stealing. That's not easy. Right. Oh, no, no. I, I think that to be honest, our goal would have an investment club or a, a pool of people interested oh, in, in funding cool. real estate because I think it will take a village. So yeah. no, I think mm-hmm. you just have to make sure you've got the right partners who are right. who get what cash flow means and mm-hmm. that's kind of why we do a lot of focus groups and events mm-hmm. just about cash flow we want to talk and teach to cash flow mm-hmm. so that more people come to the table yeah i think that's a entity um even my son understands cash flow because it ain't his cash that's flowing <laughs> okay you remind him on a regular basis mama. <laughs> so yes i love that whole thing of teaching people the, it's the financial abcs mm-hmm. right and especially how it's going to impact your business uh latoya how have you found that you know from the financial standpoint and running your business tell us about your experience i mean what have what have been some of the opportunities that you've had what have been some of the challenges that you've had as a young entrepreneur and I think this is a whole different space I've never even heard of a business model like this so my background is in fashion merchandising Mm. so I'm more on the creative side Mm -hmm. so it's so easy for me to create Mm -hmm. Um, on the business side there has definitely been a struggle Um, talk about cash flow and um, profit and loss and all those balance sheets. Right. <laughs> and and it becomes like right. foreign language. Right. <laughs> um, but I, what I, in the beginning, I just got a really good accountant that kind of could mm-hmm. help oh, me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Start so the, important. Yeah. It's understanding your strengths and weaknesses and, and the gaps that Absolutely. need to be filled, right? Absolutely. Wow. It's exciting. I, I'm just excited by where you are in your business. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, and and how your work with brand at this particular intersection in what you're doing can be so powerful for you and 
And just as an example for our community in terms of what it means to get connected with people who are helping you think through the more complex and complicated and right. sometimes really scary parts of doing entrepreneurship. Yeah. Philip, would you have any words of wisdom for our listeners who are like LaToya, you know, going through that process of figuring out what in their business model works or doesn't work or where to go next? And what would you share with them? I think some great advice that was given to me was really just focus on what you do well. Mm. <laughs> focus on what you do well, master that, put all 10,000 hours worth of work that it takes to master that. Sure. And then you find people to bring in other partners who have their own master, have their own specialty skill, you know? So that's, that's really my advice because entrepreneurs, we all want to do everything. Yeah, absolutely. Right? <laughs> so, and we figure if know. we do it all, we'll get there faster, <laughs> uh -huh. which generally is not the and case. The problem I was going to say, normally uh, you derail because of that, uh, right? A hundred percent of zero is still zero. <laughs> So, you know, when you think about that, you have to be willing to give out equity this when it makes sense. This is the numbers guy, right? <laughs> no, totally. I'm just totally. a banker, so it's easy. 100% of zero is zero. That, that's easy math for me. So. Awesome. <laughs> and it yeah. doesn't change. Right. Yeah. Cool. Mm -hmm. And Latoya, what would your words of inspiration be for somebody who's starting their journey, the journey you put yourself on two years ago? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would say just be really clear what the intentions are of the problem that you're trying to solve. Oh, God bless you. Say that again. I was going to say, oh, my <laughs> God, thank you. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. a need, right? Absolutely. Something that, yes. Absolutely. And I, I love the fact that you came out of fashion. So what you're doing is not so far afield from, you know, Leveraging your interests. Absolutely. <laughs> because, it, it, you know, that ain't me. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, so I wouldn't be stepping in a fashion role. But I think people need to understand that. How do you leverage your strengths? How do you leverage the needs and the gaps that you might have on your team? And I think that brand has helped you to do that. Is that right? Absolutely. They contribute to that for sure. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's wonderful. We're actually excited to kind of see how Heritage 1933 continues to grow. And every step of the way, if you need help or need some advice, feel free to reach out. Oh, I'm there. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's no stranger at all. Uh, <laughs> well, on that note, I want to thank you both for making time to be yes. with us, to share your no stories problem. and to help inspire others. Uh, LaToya, how can folks find out more about your company, buy your products, support your mission? They can go to heritage1933.com and then we're on social media as well as heritage1933. Wonderful. And Philip, how can folks get connected to brand and all the good stuff you're doing? You can find out about us at brandofstl.com and we're on social media as the brand of STL. Ooh. Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and Instagram. Right. And we've mentioned a few times that he has a partner, Chevelle Patterson. So yes. if you're out and about and you see Philip and or Chevelle, Chevelle, make sure you take a few minutes to introduce yourself and get connected with all the great things that they're and doing. And you guys are up at Venture Cafe, right? Yeah. So yeah. great way to meet them. They're all out and about. So yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for being with us. We uh, look forward to seeing how you guys move forward. Yes. And I'm all excited. the good work that you do. We appreciate yes. this. Thank, Thank you. you for coming. Changing the way you view new ventures, igniting your thinking about entrepreneurship. It's entrepreneurially thinking. Get connected and discover more. Visit our website for show notes, resources, information about our guests, upcoming events, and of course, all your favorite episodes. If you have any questions, be sure to leave them for us in the comment sections and be sure to leave us a five-star rating on iTunes. The best way to show love is to share. Let everybody know that you're thinking entrepreneurially. So visit our website, entrepreneurially thinking.com hashtag ethink stl entrepreneurially thinking is another positive production of rare gem productions thanks for listening